Uh, Elizabeth, um, thank you. That was incredible. Um, I don't know if uh, your act of forgiveness will help your captors. We pray it will. Um, but for the thousand plus people here and uh, everyone watching online, your act of courage and forgiveness has helped us. So thank you for that. I'm very grateful. <clears throat> Our final speaker this evening uh, is my friend Mark Goodman. He is the founder and the executive director of 70 Times 7, and uh, he is responsible for all of this, and he is responsible for this evening. Um, I asked him how should I introduce him, and he said, I'm the bald smiley guy. And I thought, <laughs> anything else? He said, I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And I was like, Ooh, that's not going to help here either. So... Um, so what I would say is Mark is a friend. Um, he is uh, a man who has walked the path of forgiveness. He is walking the path of forgiveness. And he is so passionate to see people come alive uh, by coming through their story. And I cannot wait for you to hear from Mark right after this. I tell you what, I am so excited that all of you are here tonight to experience an evening of forgiveness. I'm grateful for each one of you here, for those of you online. I'd like to say a big thank you. Thank you to our sponsors, to each of our volunteers, to North Point, and to Evan. It's because of all of you that this is possible. And I'd really like to say a big thank you to Hassani and Elizabeth. Weren't they great? Please, one more time. I just love, love, love your transparency and your willingness to share your personal path to forgiveness. See, just real quick before I get started, out of curiosity, I'd love to know with a raise of hands, how many of you are here to North Point the very first time? Do you mind? First time? That's great. Thank you. I'm glad to have you here. Tonight, you've heard some really tough stories. You really have. And for those of you familiar with TED Talks, I'd like to share with you one of my personal favorites from neuroscientist Jill Bolt-Taylor about having a stroke. And in it, Jill talks about the blessing in disguise, that she was happier she was happier because she forgot whom she was mad at and why she was mad. <laughs> now, just for clarity, I'm not suggesting that anybody should, should have a stroke tonight. In fact, online, I think we should have like a disclaimer underneath, do not have a stroke. However, tonight, if you're open to participating in forgiveness, the same sense of freedom from anger is available to you. I'm guessing each one of you here tonight has your own pain story. Let's face it, many of us don't get out of childhood, let alone to be an adult, without emotional bumps, scars, bruises, wounds. I'm one of them. Like many of you, I hid the pain. I hid my past. I hid my story. Oh, I was great at wearing a mask. A lot of you know that mask. It's that mask that says, it's all good. I got this. It's okay. But in the meanwhile, I was carrying around my backpack my backpack full of shame, pain, and blame. Many of you here tonight and watching online know me as a healthcare technology executive that traveled the world. I've been a, a guest in the United Arab Emirates 
at the palace with his highness and his excellency, and I've dined with kings. There are others of you here tonight that know me as the Tampa Bay Bucks diehard fan. Go Bucks. I had to slide that in there. Share in unity wherever I go. And there are others of you that know my wife, my beautiful family, happy, healthy, and doing well. But like a lot of you, it was all on the outside. See, as a teenager, my brother and I lived homeless on the street of L.A. for almost a year. We ate out of dumpsters. We ate from soup lines. But it was still better than what we had growing up in Detroit. With a father who's alcoholic, my dad physically and sexually abused his own boys. We grew up in a household of violence, violence of parent to child, child to child. My bedroom door had bumper stickers on it to hide the holes in it at different times where my brothers would come at me with a, a bat or a knife. It was safer and better in L.A., in the streets, than it was at home. I had it the easiest of the four boys. I have one brother. My dad would beat him to the point of being unconscious. I have another brother that to this day, he has, a trouble, he has trouble closing his eyes at night. Because to do so takes him right back to what my dad was doing to him at age 12. And then my middle brother. My middle brother called me one morning in 1986 to tell me that he loved me and that he was sorry. And it was on that phone call that he took his own life. Yeah, it was safer and better in the streets of L.A. But my wounds, like many of yours, went untreated. See, there was the wound that happened to me, and it was the unforgiveness that ate away at me. Let me say that again. There was a wound that happened to me and the wound of unforgiveness that ate away at me. Each time that we are hurt by someone else or we hurt someone else, it causes a wound, a wound that shows itself in anger, depression, relationship problems, spiritual separation, relationship problems of all means. And sometimes, substance abuse or even the abuser becomes the abused. And in cases like my brother, sometimes it ends suicide. Hurt people hurt people. Did you ever go to a hospital just to go hang out and have a good time? <laughs> really? Yeah, me neither. Hurt people aren't fun to be around. Have you ever been around somebody that was so bitter from a pain that you could actually feel it coming off of them. Are you one of them? See, we think that we're hiding our stories, keeping it packed away that nobody knows. 
but the ripple effects of that wound, the ripple effects of that unforgiveness can be felt everywhere around our lives and with every relationship that we have. If you've ever felt that way, you're not alone. Look what's happening right now in entertainment and politics. How long have they stayed silent and how well has that worked out for them? And why? Why do so many of us stay silent in our pain? And how well has that worked out for us? See, without forgiveness, the wound never heals. It festers and does more harm. It's painful. I get it. As I look out in this room, I see stories Stories of abuse. Stories of abuse from a spouse, a loved one. Stories of abuse is, is children. Statistically, 25% of you that are listening to me tonight were abused as a child in one of four ways. Physically. Emotionally, sexually, and then there's one just of neglect. Enough is enough. There are people who have done violence against you, divorce, spouse, ex spouse, mom, dad, still holding on to it, infidelity. Infidelity, maybe you were the one who cheated and there's shame. Or the one who did the cheating. And either way, there's pain and there's blame. People have ripped you off. People did you wrong. Or you did wrong to them. And you have regret and shame. Shame that is overwhelming you. I get it. I understand. We're scared. We're scared to talk about it. We're scared to think about it. These wounds are painful. But the wounds of unforgiveness can inflict greater pain on us and those around us. I'd like to introduce you to Sharon, to share with you about the pain of unforgiveness. Next thing I know, his hand is in the window, um, knife to my throat, don't say anything, don't scream, you're going to do exactly what I say or I'll kill you. He proceeds to hold the knife to my throat with my head up against the headrest. He basically said, um, I'm going to do whatever I want to you and again, don't scream, don't, don't try to get away. Um, or you'll be killed. That was pretty, you know, he said that a lot. He pushed me into the back seat of the car and you know, proceeded to um, sexually assault me. Um, basically made me perform sexual acts on him. Um, I fought somewhat, but when I fought, he got very aggressive and, and, um, very threatening. So 
during the course of the assault, and I, I honestly can't remember how long it lasted, I was trying to keep him calm, so I started talking to him. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm thinking maybe I can get some information out of him. Try not to think about what's happening here and, and just try to, you know, to save my life. I, and, and in the same token, I'm saying goodbye to everybody I love because I just, I, I didn't know whether I was ever going to see them again. I, I think um, aside from murder, um, Rape is a, is a, it, it's, it's, it's an odd, it's very, it's heinous. I, you, you feel violated, you feel like a victim, you feel like it's all your fault. Um, everything that you read, everything that you read uh, in, the, in the newspapers or, or read in a book or watch on a documentary about, about how people feel after a sexual assault, it's all true. Um, you think, could I have done something different? Did I provoke it? Uh, you, you, you blame yourself. That's a huge. That's a huge weight because then you think, how could I have conducted myself differently? Of course, there's the fear of the person always, you know, being out there. Thank gosh for me, he he was caught, so I knew where he was, so I didn't have to worry. You know, so I, I'm I'm lucky in that respect. Uh, but you go through all. You go through the gambit of emotions. It's the fear. Then it's the anger then it's the embarrassment. So I've, 30, I've had 32 years to process this so far, and I get forgiveness, and I understand it. And I think that it could possibly lift the burden or lift the load. I just haven't gotten there yet. And so many people ask, but it's not, you're not forgiving the person, you're, it's, it's for you, and I, and I know that. Uh, and I wish it was that easy. I would love to be able to forgive and have that burden lifted. I just can't, I can't get there. And um, I, I know that I would probably feel better if I could forgive. I just haven't figured out a way to quite, to quite get there yet. I don't let it drive my entire world. I don't think about it every day. I do, but it doesn't debilitate me. Um, but I just haven't gotten to the point where I can say I forgive him. Knowing the Lord, I, I, I have a faith. I, you know, I don't know how to define, I don't know how to define it to anyone. Um, but I'm not quite there with, with that relationship do you either. Play that at all in this yeah. Relationship? Yes. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, and I'm, everybody that goes through something traumatic, why, why would, why would God allow this to happen and sure and I was angry for a long long time I've gotten over the anger but I haven't gotten over the the want to to, to build that relationship I love Sharon I'm so proud of her she is here tonight and she's so brave. She's brave to share her story with us tonight. And she was incredibly brave to survive that. See, Sharon's offender wasn't just a rapist. He was a serial rapist and a serial murderer. She's one of the few that lived through her situation. This man was so evil that most recently, he was shown on an A&E documentary of why does evil exist with Morgan Freeman. Now, Sharon has never been married. She doesn't have kids. And she doesn't have a relationship with God. Now, please, let me clear this up right now. I'm not saying that you have to be married or have to have kids in order to be married. I mean, I'd be happy. I'm not. But what I am saying, that unforgiveness can deprive you of the things that you want most in life. And I believe, I believe that Sharon is going to heal and forgive. And I want that for you. 
So why? Why forgiveness? Why should we, when someone has caused so much pain for what they did to us, for what they did against us, and for so many, to do so just seems so wrong. Let's talk about what forgiveness isn't and is. Forgiveness isn't about reconciliation. If your offender is still hurting people, stay away. It isn't about Forgetting. In fact, the path to forgiveness may have to revisit some tough memories. Forgiveness is one side of a two sided transaction. Let me say that again. Forgiveness is one side of a two sided transaction. See, one side is the person who took something from you. It's the person who owes you. And the other side is you. It's the person who is owed. Forgiveness is not about their willingness to pay the debt. Forgiveness is not about receiving an apology. It is about your side of the transaction. It's the side that says, you owe, but I forgive this debt. See, it's in the forgiveness and the pardon is where the freedom is. It's not subject to an apology. It doesn't require anything from them. If you're waiting for an apology or a pay-up or the system to find on your side or even God to do bidding of wrath upon them, then peace and freedom never come. As long as we feel cheated or owed, the wound and the pain remains. And as soon as we're willing to forgive this debt, the healing begins. The wound of unforgiveness affects and infects every one of our relationships, including that with our Lord. Let me say that again. The wound of unforgiveness affects and infects every one of our relationships. See, while we hold on to that pain, what we don't see, what we don't recognize, is that it's no longer about them. They may have left. They're out of our lives. They may be passed away. We often don't recognize that by hanging on, we're still the victim and the one being abused. See, we often feel is that if somehow or another, if I forgive, that gives the other person a pass and that it was okay. And it couldn't be further from the truth. See, when I hear Elizabeth's story, I see two heroines. I love Elizabeth. I love how, excuse me, how brave, how brave you were to live through at age 14 what you did. I love how brave you are to be here on this stage to share your story. But it was her mom, her mom to recognize the next day that I love my daughter so much that I am not going to allow the wound of unforgiveness affect and infect my daughter. 
See, her mom recognized that forgiveness was on their side of the transaction. It had nothing to do with them. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Now, I know it's easier said than done. So why? Why forgiveness? Because the wound of unforgiveness is painful for you. The wound of unforgiveness affects and infects every one of our relationships. But, but there's hope. There is freedom. Freedom from the chains of pain, shame, and blame. For me, it took many years. It doesn't have to take this long. See, earlier as an adult, I forgave my dad for what he did. But it wasn't until later in my adulthood that I forgave for what he did to me and what it did to me. I held on. I kept it quiet. I didn't share it with anyone. But there is hope because I'm a free man now. A free man and every one of my relationships are better because of it. And speaking of my dad, my dad at age 65 sobered up and turned his life over to the Lord. For the last 23 years of my dad's life, he turned into the most warm, loving, godly men you've ever met. The same man who should have gone to jail for the rest of his life. My dad is part of this forgiveness story that you are never too old or have done too much bad to find God's forgiveness, redemption, and grace. Now, most of you here tonight received a backpack. There are some goodies in here. And for those of you who didn't get one, my apologies, or at home, you have your own backpack to carry. Your backpack of pain, shame, and blame. Now, I don't know what your wound of forg that happened to you of pain, and I don't know what your wound of unforgiveness is. But I do know that it hurt. It probably still does. Before going, I want to share with you one of my favorite verses. And this is Matthew 18, 21 and 22. I'm going to ask, even if you have your own Bible or electronic one, that you'll please follow along with me because I have a much, much newer version. And in it it says, Then Peter was driving on I-75, and he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, how many times may that Lexus cut us off, and I forgive him? <laughs> Up to seven times? <laughs> hey, you laugh, but even in your Bible it says, Jesus and his disciples were all in one accord. And i got to be honest, it's always bothered me. How do you get 13 people into a Honda? <laughs> then Jesus said, I tell you not seven times, but 70 times seven. How many times would you forgive? How well would you do in that situation? Forgiveness isn't easy no matter how small or how big. Whether it's on I-75 or whatever your story is, whatever your circumstances. But the peace and the freedom is worth it. Look at Elizabeth. 
Decide tonight. I'm going to encourage each and every one of you to empty your backpack. Because the wound of unforgiveness affects and infects every one of your relationships. And there's freedom in forgiveness. Start on your path to forgiveness, short or long. It's about moving from silence to freedom. From pain to healing. Healing of the wound of unforgiveness. So it's always about forgiving 70 times 7. But tonight, it's about forgiving 70 times 7 times each and every one of you listening to me tonight. That's you in the room that's you watching at home. You have the right to keep it closed up and stay quiet. I'll give you that. Or tonight, tonight you can decide. I'm tired. I'm tired of being quiet. I'm tired of carrying it around. I'm tired of being the victim I want to heal. I want freedom. There is freedom in forgiveness. And I want that for you and you and you. See, I get amazing calls and emails virtually every single day. People who are sharing their stories, often for the first time. And over and over, I hear, I'm tired of being silent. How about you? Are you tired? We want to help you, and we need your help. Think of the impact that we can have if we lead the charge to forgive, to heal, and offer it to others. This is your moment to decide. Decide tonight. This is your time to end the silence and join us on the path to hope, change, Freedom, freedom found in forgiveness. Evan is going to come back up. You're awesome. You're awesome. Uh, We love you, Mark. Thank you for being part of our church, and uh, just thank you for that. Uh, 70 Times 7 is a nonprofit that's committed to helping people uh, get on the path of forgiveness. Uh, They're in the development of a whole curriculum program, which is so exciting for individuals and groups. Um, There's a book in development, that's right, and a full-featured movie, actually, that's in development right now, which is so super cool how many people this is going to help. And 70 Times 7 uh, is a global initiative as well. They're in South Africa working with Judea Harvest uh, to help those who are hurting Uh, from the scourge of apartheid and to find freedom in their forgiveness as well. There's a team of people tonight that can help you as you leave here today. I welcome you to stop by uh, one of the booths in the back uh, of the room to learn a little bit more or to get help to your path to forgiveness. Uh, They'd love to talk with you, pray with you, follow up in any of that. Um, I tell you, as we finish tonight, uh, I know we're running a little bit late. I would love just to close in prayer uh, for all of us, if that's okay. Let me pray. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, um, this is uh, so difficult for so many people. Um, Father, it's hard to understand the things that happen to us. It's hard to understand the things that we do 
uh, sometimes. And Father, uh, you, in your great, great love for all of us, uh, no matter where we are, no matter what we think about you, Father, what you think about us is that you love us and you call us your sons and daughters. And then you did something to prove it. Even when we were unlovable and even when we were sin and we were unworthy of being forgiven, you sent your son Jesus to die on our behalf. That we would be forgiven and that we would be in a relationship with you. And Father, when we find ourselves in these situations where we are experiencing the pain of unforgiveness, um, it's hard to even know what to pray sometimes. But Lord, in your love and wisdom for us, you even gave us a prayer to pray. And in that prayer, it said, Lord, Lord, forgive us our debts. Lord, give us the courage to forgive our debtors. Lord, forgive us of our trespasses. Lord, please give us the courage to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Father, we are so grateful for Christ, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for being here this evening. I hope you have a safe trip home and a great rest of your week. Take a on the